ABC News Special Report. Here's Savannah Guthrie. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We're coming on the air with breaking news. The Supreme Court has just issued a pair of opinions in closely watched cases involving affirmative action in college admissions at the University of North Carolina as well as Harvard University and has struck down those policies as unconstitutional. I want to turn to Laura Jarrett, our senior legal correspondent. And Laura, you and I are both doing a, a version of speed read here on a very complex pair of cases, but it does seem to me um, very clear clear that these affirmative action programs by these two universities have been struck down. Many people thought, Laura, the court would outright overrule prior decisions that allow for affirmative action in certain conditions. And it's unclear to me that this opinion goes that far. How do you see it? That's exactly right. We have a major decision here as it relates to race and education in this country. And as you said, for decades, the court has said that you can look at race as a limited plus factor, a tip, as you, if you will, not any checking the box exercise. And here, in this case, a divided court has said the programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina are invalid. Now, those are important because those are ones that many schools base their programs on. And so the up shot here for schools as they try to sort their way through what is a deeply divided court, uh, an opinion uh, spanning over 200 pages here, is to try to sort through what exactly is left. Yeah. It's clear that if a student feels that race has impacted their life in a deep and meaningful individualistic way, they could write an essay about that. And the court for a long time has said that schools can use diversity, the educational benefits of diversity, as a legitimate goal. And it does not appear, at least so far that the court is taking that away. But to the extent that Harvard and the University of North Carolina and other schools have been going about it in a way that is not as narrowly tailored as this court believes that it should be, those programs will no longer be invalid. But I have to say, again, this is a complicated opinion. It's going to take a while, I think, for the colleges and universities around the country to figure out what exactly is left, if anything, of their programs and how exactly they're going to have to try to now sort through um, what they can do to comply with the law going forward. But what is clear here is that the headline is those colleges and universities programs are invalid. This is a sea change. This is the first time we have seen anything like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's a scathing opinion. I mean, it, it talks about Harvard and UNC's admissions programs lacking sufficiently focused and measurable objectives, unavoidably employing race in a negative manner, involving racial, racial stereotyping, lacking a meaning endpoint. So while we did not see that form of words, Laura, that this prior decision upholding affirmative action programs, Grutter v. Bollinger, we didn't say that is outright overruled. To your point, it, in what is left? So if, if these admissions programs, which were tailored to try to comply with Supreme Court precedents, if they don't pass muster, you are left to wonder what will. Exactly. Harvard was seen as the gold standard dating back to 1978. It was propped up as the program that actually got it right. The idea that it was taking the whole picture into account, that race, again, was just one factor in a larger, non-formulaic, holistic approach. That's what the schools always said. We're flexible. It's not a just check the box for one race and you get in. But again, it appears on this record that these conservative justices have disagreed with that. And, you know, many had wondered why they took this case in the first place if they weren't going to sort of reevaluate the law and it seems though that the the predictions had been largely correct and based off of oral argument the justices seem very skeptical in particular the chief saying where does it end if Grutter which came out in 2003 said in 25 years from now you shouldn't have to be relying on race anymore well we're almost at that 25 year mark and it appears because the schools didn't have a time limit that they were willing to commit to that was really used as a non against them. Absolutely. It does seem that really got in the craw of many of the justice during oral arguments when they asked these universities, okay, so when does it end? Even Grutter, this seminal Supreme Court case that upheld the use of race-conscious admissions under certain circumstances, 
imagined that it would end, even said in 25 years we shouldn't need this anymore. And when the universities were asked, okay, so how do you see this ending? The court was clearly not satisfied with the responses there. And that was one of the reasons why these two admissions programs failed in the court's views. They also, I read, just continue to read with you, Laura, here. It says, many universities have for too long wrongly concluded that the touchstone of an individual's identity is not challenges bested, skills built, or lessons learned, but the color of their skin. This nation's constitutional history does not tolerate that choice. This is Chief Justice John Roberts writing the majority opinion six to three with Justices Sotomayor uh, Kagan and Judge Justice Jackson in dissent. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's interesting because you have to start from the backdrop that the conservatives on this court have made uh, sort of their feelings about what is more colloquially known as affirmative action for a long time. And the question was always, well, how far do they want to go? Do they want to say you can't use race at all, even in an essay? That would be somewhat extraordinary. And again, at oral argument, even Justice Jackson pointed out, well, how can you strip that away from somebody's identity? How can you tell them they can't even talk about it in an essay? And it appears the court is not going that far. And so now it seems the next step there where we're going here is where people will be trying to find other ways to incorporate how race is meaningful in their lives. But again, not in the way that schools are doing it currently. It's going to be a reworking of the current system. If you want to at least explain how race is important to you, and the school wants to take that into effect as it tries to have a diverse campus uh, and, and promote that. That's not wrong, but it's the way the school have been going about it that the justices believe violates the law. And let me turn, Laura, to Danny Savalas, also another lawyer with us who's been looking into this opinion. And you know, it, you always ask uh, when you see an opinion like this, so not only what does this mean for the universities, but what does it mean for other segments of society who might use kind of race conscious hiring decisions? So employment or even the military, which has long said that having a diverse officer corps is incredibly important to troop morale and the like. How do you see this, perhaps if not in a legally binding way, but in a practical way affecting other aspects of our culture. Well, this is really fascinating because we're all digesting this 230 plus page opinion and the majority doesn't appear to explicitly strike down Grutter. And Grutter was the case that for the first time recognized that diversity could be a compelling interest that could warrant the use of race.